how long will you refuse uh, to humble yourself before me? Uh, this, is, this is Moses speaking to Pharaoh, but it's the voice of God. Say, it's the voice of God. How long? How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go that they may serve me. There are some Pharaoh spirits that are trying to keep you, trying to stop you or even your loved ones uh, from truly, truly worshiping the Lord, your God. That Pharaoh spirit is going to die. Somebody say that Pharaoh spirit is under my feet. Uh, We're taking authority over that that Pharaoh spirit and it's not going to have a place. Uh, The Bible says here, if you refuse, the locusts will devour your territory. How can I say that? Because that's the next plague that we are at. The locusts. How many of you say, well, you know what? There's been some locusts that have devoured my life in the past. Uh, There have been some things, some creeping, some swarming, some crawling locusts that have taken some cheap shots and have taken things that they should not have taken in the form of relationships. They have taken some things they should have never taken in the form of health. They have taken my life years. How many of you can say, oh, yes, I understand fully what she's talking about. The locust has come and killed, steal. He steals, he destroys. But God, well, this is where they were in, the te- in this story, the locusts, right? And the locusts were there. And they're- Pharaoh, though, was so prideful. His pride and his resistance against the Lord ultimately led to his destruction. We know that pride and resistance against the Lord leads to destruction. And this is what happened here. But let every prideful resistance to the will of God be destroyed. I want you to say that over yourself. Let every prideful resistance to the will of God be destroyed. Be cast to the bottom of the sea. That resistance is a spirit that's coming against the church of God. That resistance is the spirit of the world that's trying to get you down and keep you down. And some of you are oblivious to it, but not after tonight. Say, not after tonight. After tonight, my eyes are going to be opened and I'm walking with a whole new level of authority. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, we got to stand up. We got to stand up for our God given rights. It's time to stand up for our God given rights. And some of you just need to stand up. And don't give me this, I'm standing up on the inside story. Some of you need to stand up. Matter of fact, by faith. Yep, by faith. They're standing in faith. They're standing in faith. We're standing up for the truth of God's word shall prevail. The truth of God's word shall prevail. Do not be deceived or pressured or intimidated into violating your God-given rights. Stand up for your freedom. Oh, some of you know exactly where I'm going. Stand up for your freedom. Stand up for your freedom. When they want to jab you in the arm and they want to put some toxic material in you that you don't want, stand up for your freedom. It's real simple. It's real simple. Let me make it really clear. Let me make it real plain. Here, here, here's, here's how simple it is. No. No. If you don't want it, you shouldn't take it. If you don't want it, you shouldn't take it. You shouldn't be forced to take something that is completely against what you believe is right. Don't be pressured. And that's the key. Do not be pressured. Do not be intimidated into violating your freedom. Do not be pressured into taking or being injected with something you don't want. Do not allow for someone to force you into taking something, a vaccine that you don't believe in. Come on, somebody. Somebody say the truth. When they start telling you that you have to do this, says who? Says who? You got to stand up. All it takes is for everybody to just cower, for everything to sink. Yeah, we have to know. We have to know something right now. You cannot allow something to violate your rights and to violate the spirit of the living God within you. Now, if you feel like you should be taking it, that's a whole nother story. I'm saying, if you feel like this is not something you should take, why would you let someone force you? Why would you let something intimidate you? Why would you let someone put something upon you that you don't want? But that's what's happening. And a lot of Christians are just falling for it because, well, everybody is saying they have to. If they have to, they have to. No, you don't have to. There's always a way out. 
What was Pharaoh saying? What was, he was being resistant to the will of God. Moses kept giving him the truth, kept giving him the word. And Pharaoh continued to resist the will of God until that day when it was done. That's it. Your time is up. The Pharaoh in your life, you've got to be able to speak to that Pharaoh and know, Pharaoh, your time is just about up. And I'm not going to succumb to your foul ways because they are foul. How about this? How about demanding compliance to an ungodly system? Do you know that's a form of witchcraft? When they demand compliance to an ungodly system, you need to comply. Yeah, but it's not biblical. You need to comply. You need to accept. Yeah, but it's not biblical. You need to comply. You need to accept. Says who? Right? Come on, mama. Says who? But you know what? If everybody just, if Christians just shut their mouths and shut their eyes and fold their hands, guess what happens? You just start going to hell in a handbasket. But not on our watch. Come on, somebody should have said it before I said it. Not on our watch. Not on my watch. Holy Ghost. No, seriously, not on our watch. In Jesus' name. Bullying people to accept and to tolerate that which is not God and that which is not, it's unacceptable, but there's a bully spirit. And some of you guys, whether you experience it or not, but for some, it's your children, it's your family, this bully spirit, and you know it's not of God, but you feel it. You know you need to take authority over that. When you feel, you start seeing that, you need to take authority. This is a spirit. It is a spirit. It tries to bring in fear. It tries to intimidate, right? It tries to control. That's exactly what it does. You know, ever since we had last year on the COVID, right? And so many people, some that got sick from COVID, you know, and some of them with lasting effects, like if the COVID's over, but they have these symptoms that just, like their body is just not quite the same ever since having that COVID. Don't you know that those are demonic assignments that have actually continued to plague you because of that stupid COVID? Now, my heart goes out to those that have lost a loved one because of it. Absolutely. And we pray for their families. It's not, it's not a funny thing. It, there was a virus, but it was a pandemic that was sent from the pit to destroy people God's people people that would take the bait and so now we see bodies I constantly am getting calls from people that will say ever since I had COVID like my body is not the same I'm having hard time breathing I'm having all this issue you know chest pain um lungs, you know, just all these different things, right? You're shaking your head. Is that you? Yeah. And so, so you know what we do? We take authority. We just command the spirit to go. And sometimes you just have to be consistent. Just be consistent. Can I tell you something? If that's you, I want you to take courage. It's going to be over. It, it, there is a day. It is ending. Those symptoms that are plaguing you, you go, my gosh, what happened ever since? This? There is an end to this, okay? This is not your lot in life. This is not where you end up forever. Just, you know, go, every time you take authority, you command that thing to leave. It's going to leave. So maybe it's leaving in stages. So what? It's leaving. So what? It's leaving. Make sure you just don't back up, though. Don't back down. Just realize you have to be more persistent than it. Okay? And that's the key. Because some people go, I don't know what's happening. Guess what happens then? Fear. Fear starts to grip their heart, and they think, oh, my gosh, it's something wrong. Maybe I, need, maybe I need this. Maybe I need that. No, no, no. You need to stand still and know that I am God, saith the Lord. Be still and know that I am God. Know that I am your healer and your deliverer. Know that if this assignment came near you, it's going to, it's going to leave in the name of Jesus. No pestilence. No pestilence. No pestilence. It's coming near your dwelling place. And some of you might go, yeah, but it did come near. Yeah, but it did. No pestilence. The word doesn't lie. If your circumstance is different from what, your, from what the Bible says, then you must allow the Bible to be true in your life. You must allow the Bible to be true in your life. Hallelujah. False accusations let's look at this one false accusations against you oh yeah okay right there she says right here from the hordes of hell they shall not stand against you in the name of Jesus when you have false 
accusations against you, against your character, against your livelihood. See, some of you are raising your hands because you know exactly, oh, she's talking to me right now. She's talking to me right now. Yeah, we command right now those false accusations to come off of you in the name of Jesus, to be under our feet in the name of Jesus. I cancel every diabolical lie, every scheme, every wicked plot from the devil itself. I command it to be under our feet right now and to be loosed off of you off your family, off your loved ones, off of you, off your family, off your loved ones, to be loosed, to be loosed, to be loosed, for your children to be set free, to be loosed, to be loosed. Every relationship right now in the name of Jesus that has been assigned, that the enemy has assigned it to be defeated, we decree a defeat right now to that demonic spirit. It will not have you. It will not have your family. It shall not pass. Somebody needs to rise up in their spirit and say, it's not going to pass my way. It may have tried to come my way, but it's not passing my way. It's underneath my feet. It's behind me, and it will not succeed. See, so some of you are... It's not going to succeed. Like I've told you before, the enemy should be afraid of you. It should be afraid of you. It should see you wake up and say, dear God in heaven, she's up again. He's up again. They're up again. Their feet are on the ground again. They're getting up again. I thought I had them. I thought I defeated them. I thought I almost buried them, but they're up again. It's time to get up again. Some of you need to just get up again and say, I'm getting up. Today is the night I'm getting up. I'm going to get up again. I'm getting up again. I'm not going to ever let the enemy win. Oh, he's tried so many times. He's tried so many, he continues to try so many times in so many ways. But God, I'm going to tell you something that it's going to sound prideful, but it's not. It's authority. Every prayer that I have prayed, and I mean prayed, for loved ones, Every prayer, every time I have stood, every time I have came, came against, excuse me, every time I've come against some demonic plan, I win. I've won. You will win. You have won. That is not a prideful statement it is a testimony of god's faithfulness it is a testimony of god's truth coming forth when you take him at his word and let me tell you there's been multiple opportunities for the enemy to try to flatten me completely and those that i love just ask my husband we were just discussing this today Many opportunities, but I'll tell you what, is the devil afraid of you? Only you can answer that question. He should be afraid of you. The devil should be afraid of you. And if he's not, wake up, wake up, speak up and show up so that the devil is afraid of you because he should be. He should be. When you wake up, when you rise, when you, when you get on the scene, that devil should be like, oh boy, I better go bother somebody else because she's going to see right through me. She's going to see right through me, and I don't want that, so I better go somewhere else. You got to know how to win the battle that you're in. Yeah, major, but you got to know how to win the battle that you're in, because the Bible says you've already won through the blood of Jesus. The Bible says that actually Jesus already made a spectacle out of him. He, he said he's already nailed him to the cross. He, he actually said that he's already victorious and he says that you're victorious with him. So you've actually already won. The devil wants you to think that you haven't won. He wants you to think that you are not going to win, but you've actually already won. Say, I've already won. I'm a winner in Christ. I'm a winner in Christ. I'm victorious in Christ. Amen. I don't care how bad it seems. I don't care how bad bad looks. You know what? Good is, is looks better. 
Hallelujah. Let every demon tremble when you stand on the word of God, and that's the key right there. Let every demon tremble when you stand on the word of God. Matthew 16, 18 says that the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Matthew 16, 18, the gates of hell, they're not going to prevail against the church, but we are the church. Every one of you is the church. The Bible says that we are the church of God, right? That, that this is the plan of Jesus. We didn't make this up, right? But the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. He says, upon this rock, I shall build my church. Say, I'm the church. Each and every one of us, we are the church. We are in a building, but we are the church individually. And the Bible says that upon this rock I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. The gates of hell shall not prevail against you. I want you to turn to your neighbor and I want you to say that to them. The gates of hell shall not prevail against you. The hordes of hell shall not gain victory over you. Powers and principalities all know that their future is in the lake of fire. They know. They know. We need to know. And we need to know when we need to know. In other words, when there's a trial. We need to remember when there's a situation. What the Bible says. Stand on the truth. Hallelujah. You know, even Jesus, Jesus, he used the word of God against demonic powers. Revelation, let's turn our Bibles to Revelation 19, 15. 19, 15. Jesus used the word of God against demonic powers. He will strike the nations with the word. The Bible says he will strike the nations with the word and rule with the rod of God. Iron. I'm going to read to you verse 15. It says, Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, and with it he should strike the nations. With what? With what? With the sword. And what is the sword? The word. Out of his mouth comes the word. Out of his mouth comes the word. It is the word of God. He will rule the nations with the rod of iron. And out of his mouth, he is striking down that nation with the word. Out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. And with it, he should strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with the rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress and the fierceness and the wrath of almighty God. If Jesus used the word, shouldn't we? Absolutely. We stand on the word of God and we're not going to allow intimidation. And it's, it's real. I mean, it's very real. It's very real what we're talking about here tonight. You know, when, when, when vaccines are mandated and you lose your right to even choose, there's something really wrong with this picture. When you don't have a right to choose, if you choose to have it, that's your choice. But when you don't have a right to choose, let me tell you something. First of all, you still have a right. Don't let somebody tell you you don't. Now, they're trying to tell you you don't, but you still have a right. It may not be comfortable, but like I said, you're going to have to say no. But you do still have a right. They're going to intimidate you. They're going to pressure you. Jobs in different places are going to pressure you. But you do still have a right. It's what you do with it. I know for me, I refuse. I refuse to receive it. I refuse. I'm sorry if you don't like that, but it's your choice, so it's my choice too. The Bible says we are to stand on the word of God, and the sword will pierce through the darkness and gain your victory. sword's going to pierce through the darkness. And in Deuteronomy 31, 6, it tells you this, be strong and of good courage, be strong and of good courage, and do not be afraid of them. Read it right there. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid of them. Of whom? Of anyone that's trying to come against you with that bully spirit, intimidating you, telling you you have to do this or do that. When it goes against what you believe God is telling you in his word, do not be afraid of them. Do not be afraid for the Lord, your God is he who is the one who goes with you and he is not going to leave you and he's not going to forsake you. Amen. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. Turn your Bibles to Psalm 24. We've been in Psalm 24 and I love this passage of scripture because you know what? He talks about the king of glory and the Lord of hosts. 
the King of glory and the Lord of hosts. Who is this King of glory? Well, like what, what you have seen even here tonight, who is this King of glory? He is the Lord strong and mighty. He is the Lord valiant. He is the Lord. He's the captain. He is the captain of angelic armies. He is the Lord of hosts this is the king of glory this is who we worship this is who we rejoice over this is who we've laid our lives down for this is who we say yes jesus i give you my all yes jesus you can have it all the king of glory he this is the king of glory the lord of hosts the lord of hosts the captain of the angelic army right i want you to remember that because where we're going I want you to remember, he's the captain of the angelic army over everything in heaven and on earth. Say everything. everything. In, heaven in heaven and on earth. earth. He is the Lord of hosts, the Lord of hosts. Strong, and strong and mighty. He is the captain, the captain. of the angelic armies the angelic army. in, heaven in heaven and on earth, and on earth. Everywhere. everywhere, according to Psalm 2410. Amen. Amen. All right. So now listen here. Uh, if you have your Bibles, turn to Revelation 19. Turn to Revelation 19. I, we just read Psalm 2410. He is the captain of the Lord of the angelic armies. Turn your Bibles to Revelation 19. And while you're turning there, regardless of what that Pharaoh spirit is opposing you with right now, regardless, whatever that Pharaoh spirit, and it is a Pharaoh spirit, whatever that Pharaoh spirit is opposing you right now, I want you to remember, let Pharaoh, the, the Lord let Pharaoh continue in rebellion, didn't he? The Lord let Pharaoh continue for a season of time in rebellion and in hardness of heart for a while. But then the end was destruction, right? Listen to who we serve. Listen to the victory that is ours. Doesn't matter what heartache, what trial, what situations around us. Listen to the victory that is ours. It's promised to us. In Revelation 19, 11 through 16, it says, Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. This is Jesus coming when he comes and when he returns on a white horse. He says, I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. White horse. The white horse, first of all, represents victory. And he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he judges and he makes war. He judges this in the superior court of heaven. He is the judge in the superior court of heaven, not on the battlefield. He is not down here trying to win something that he's already won. He's judging in the superior court of heaven, not on the battlefield. He's not down here. I hope this works. I hope I can gain this victory for my children. I hope this time it works. He's already won. He's in the superior court of heaven, faithful and true. He's faithful and he's true. And in righteousness, he judges and he makes war. And his eyes are like a flaming fire. Eyes of flaming fire. Can you see him? Comes riding on a white horse. Eyes flaming like fire. And it says, and written, and there was a name written on him that no one knew except himself. And he was clothed with ro a robe dipped in blood. That was not the blood of war. That was not the blood of a, an attack. That was not the blood of a struggle. That was not the blood of some massive demonic attack. That was the blood of his, that's his atoning blood. That was his blood. His robe was dipped in his blood. His atonement for us the atonement we are at one because of the blood of Jesus right we're at one with him because of the blood of Jesus his blood doesn't just cover our sin it's removed our sin once and for all forever for eternity right so it's his atoning blood he is he's covered with the robe and in this robe it's dipped in blood his blood that's the blood of victory. That's the blood of God's victory. Are you seeing the picture? Eyes of fire, white, riding in on a white horse. Who is it that you serve? The king of glory, the Lord of hosts, the valiant one, the one that's strong and true. 
Yes, yes. Hallelujah. And his name is called the word of God. His name is the word of God. Hallelujah. And the armies, I want you to look at verse 14. The armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, follow him on white horses. Who's following him? The armies, the armies, the armies, the armies in heaven, following him, clothed in white. Are you clothed in white? The blood of Jesus makes you white. He, he's clothed you in garments, not just in garments of praise, but he's clothed you white as snow. You are now white as snow because of the blood of Jesus, right? Are we clothed in white garments? We're going to be riding in on, on white horses following the Lord of hosts. Now, this is talking about angels and the angelic, but I believe he's also talking about us. I believe he's also talking about us. Look at Revelation 17, 14. Go to Revelation 17, 14. Quickly, quickly, quickly. It says, these will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them. For he is the Lord of lords and the King of kings, and those who are with him are called chosen and faithful. He is the Lord of lords and the King of kings. And those who are with him, those are with, are you with him? Are you with me? Are you with him? Those who are with him are called chosen and faithful. Are you not chosen according to the word in Ephesians? Has he not called you his chosen ones, his set apart ones, his bride? Yes. Those who are chosen, those who are faithful are doing what? What did we say? are with him you are with him you're going to be accompanied with him because you're chosen and faithful amen, amen. i got an amen all the way in the back of the room it's important because you need to understand something in this valiant valiant powerful role that god has assigned to every believer He's coming in on a white horse, but so are you. He is victorious, but so are you because of him. Everything he did, he's in front, and you're coming in right behind in his victory. His victory is your victory. And sometimes when you see it like that, it actually gives you the strength to say, I am not alone. His word says, be of good courage. His word says to wait Hold on, salvation is coming. His word says to hang on, deliverance is coming. He says, I know you see, I know you hear, and I know you're afraid. And there's certain reasons that things will threaten you and cause you to feel intimidated. But that is the time that you've got to remember that God has called you and chosen you to stand in faith because God is riding in on a white horse and he says, I'm calling you to come riding in right behind me. Hallelujah. Is that new to somebody? Well, you learned something new today. Amen. And then let's go, let's go back to 19, Revelation 19. We're on 15 again. Out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, and with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the, and the fierceness and the wrath of the almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written. And that is not just a name, but the name, the only name. That name that says King of Kings. Uh, that name that says Lord of Lords. Uh, that name that was given to him because he earned it. He deserved it. He is faithful, the faithful one. Amen. And this is repeated in Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Let's put up Philippians 2. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. He talks about this very thing. Hallelujah. Are we there yet? Okay. I'll read it here. God has also highly exalted. This is Philippians 2, verse 9 through 11. Therefore, God also has exalted, highly exalted him. Jesus. God has highly exalted Jesus. How many of you received Jesus tonight as your Lord and Savior? We had, I think there was what, one? Yeah. And there was two. There was two, I believe, in this room, correct? Three? There was one more, right? Was there one more? Hmm? 
Okay, I know Facebook for sure, but somebody's pointing over here. Did somebody else receive Jesus in this corner, or was there just two in this room? I think it was two in this room, right? Yeah, and then, and then um, okay, so, but then online as well. But here it says, God has exalted, highly exalted him, Jesus. God has highly exalted Jesus and given him, given Jesus, the name which is above every name. Jesus has the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, those in heaven and those of on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father, to the glory of God our, our Father. Hallelujah. So that which we read in Psalm 24, he is the Lord of hosts. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, right? He's, he's the Lord. He's the captain. He's the captain. He's in charge of the heavenly army the Lord of hosts, right? And then over in the book of Revelation, we, we read about not only is he the captain of the angelic army, but he is riding on a white horse. He will be returning. Say, Jesus is coming back. He will return riding on a white horse. And as he rides on that white horse, he, we will also at that right day and time come. We have riding in on a white horse, clothed in linen, white, pure, pure as snow because he's taken our filthy rags and he has making us and he's made us white as snow and that's what we received at salvation and that's what you can receive each and every time you feel like oh, i messed up exchange that which you feel guilty of that which maybe you have said done something that di displeased him ask him to forgive you because he already has but you ask him to forgive you and who is that for <laughs> it's for us that's for our benefit right and he'll wash you white as snow washing you white as snow he is coming back for a bride that is prepared ready pure and spotless that's us the bride of christ that's us and he wants us and he's waiting for the bride the church to awaken and to come to the knowledge for every tongue and tribe and nation that is willing to accept him. He says he's not willing for anyone to perish, but we know that some will because it's a choice. But still, for everyone that is willing to come to that saving knowledge of Jesus, what does that tell us? It tells us we have some work to do. It tells us that we have some work to do and that as God directs you, go and be the light of Christ outside there, you know, when you're at work in different places. But God wants you to speak the truth and to pray for people, pray for individuals. And lead them to Christ. And let them know of this beautiful, beautiful uh, Savior, Jesus, that we, we love and that we sing to and that we, we talk, you know, we talk with. And even today when, we, when I prayed for the one gal, you know, and she says this is the first time she's been in a church like this and she's never received Jesus. But today you received Jesus. And she said this is a little different than anything she's used to. Of course it is. You know, I, it's too bad that it is. It shouldn't be. But I know that it is. Um, you know, but it, I believe it's getting more and more normal. I believe that the church is getting hungry for truth. And I believe the world is, as the world gets darker, like the church is looking for truth, right? Like really, like the power of God, the anointing of God, which is present. And the anointing is what breaks the yoke, right? And you guys know that that's what this church has been founded on. Number one, it was founded on prayer. But non, number two, the, 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 the Lord told me, his presence, his miracles, and his healings in apostolic church to the nations, right? And so that is what he's, he's saying. This is a church of signs and wonders. This is a church where we uphold the word of God. This is a church where we honor God's presence. We honor the holiness of God. We honor God's presence because he is holy. And we take God at his word. And it's really important that we do that. And when we do that, we also know that God wants to move and he wants to touch. He wants to heal his church. And there's a lot of healing that needs to take place. And he's doing it. And it's beautiful to see. Amen? Amen. So I thought we would end with this. If we could stand, we're going to go through um, some prayer. Because, you know, I, I believe that, um, well, a lot of us received prayer already. But, I, but there's one thing I want to do, and we're going to do it corporately. We're going to ask God to forgive us of some things and then come out of agreement 
with some things. And as this happens, you know, trust me, some of you will be getting delivered. If you can't stand, or you, don't worry about it. It's, it's fine. Like, stay seated. It's, you're totally fine, Mama. But uh, if you can stand, that would be great. And um, so, so repent. We're going to repent. I'm going to call out some things. And not only repent, but we're going to renounce. And as things are being renounced, what's happening is that is the demonic power is is weakening. It's losing its power. So what does that mean? That means you're getting free. Somebody say, I'm getting free. Somebody say, I'm going to get free. I'm getting more free. Getting free, free, free. Thank you, Jesus, because the Son has set me free. So therefore, I am free. So, Father. Your word says that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So we don't want to walk in any, any pride at all, even pride that we're unaware of, even pride that we're unaware of. So, Lord, we ask for forgiveness right now. So, Lord, we ask for forgiveness, we repent, and we renounce the following sins and the following demonic powers. Yeah, just repeat. Just repeat after me. I repent and I renounce every demonic partnership. I repent, I repent and I renounce, I renounce. Compromise. compromise, people pleasing, people pleasing. Pride. pride, jealousy, jealousy. Ungodly, competition. ungodly competition, foul language, foul language. Anger. anger, lust, lust. Perversion. perversion, unbelief, unbelief. Unforgiveness. unforgiveness, slander, False judgments, False judgments. Rebellion. rebellion, idolatry, idolatry. A, judgmental a judgmental spirit, lying spirits, lying spirits. deceptive spirits, deceptive spirits. spirits, of, idolatry. spirits of, idolatry. of idolatry. I repent and I renounce these. I, and I, renounce. I command these to leave me right now. I command them to leave my generational bloodline right now. I command them to leave my mind. I command them to leave my heart. I command them to leave my body. I command them to leave my home. Right now. Right now in Jesus' name. Father, I repent and I renounce any occult activity. New age involvement. I repent and renounce it. I repent and I renounce. Using marijuana, using marijuana, any forms of crystals, any forms of crystals horoscope, reading, horoscope reading, all drug use, all, drug use, all, alcohol, use. all alcohol use, I, ca I, cast I cast those spirits out. I, command, those spirits them out. I command them to leave me right now. All symptoms that try to hang on, leave now. All, all go, now. go, go. In Jesus' name, loosen from me right now. Every spirit of addiction, go right now. Every spirit, every hardness of heart, go right now. Every place where there's blinders on my eyes, I command them to leave right now. Yep. Unruly spirits, I command you to leave right now in the name of Jesus. I repent and I renounce marital unfaithfulness, sex before marriage, inappropriate sexual behavior, and inappropriate sexual speech. I renounce it all. I command it to go right now. It's not going to be part of my future. It may have been part of my past, but it's not going to be part of my future. Go now. In the name of Jesus. I repent and I renounce not putting God first, not yielding to the Holy Spirit, being stubborn, or persistent in my own will. I repent of these things. I renounce them. Father, forgive me. Now I command them to go. Every one of you go. In the name of Jesus. And last section. I repent and I renounce of having a weak Christian walk. Not standing up for truth. Having fear, having fear, fear of man, fear of, man. Fear of, rejection. Fear of rejection, fear of getting sick, fear of, getting sick. Fear of, danger. Fear of danger, fear of accidents, fear of, accidents. Fear of, the, future. Fear of the future, 
Fear of disapproval. Fear of, disapproval. Fear of, not, being loved. Fear of not being loved. I command these things right now to leave me. Every one of them go. I rebuke you, Satan. You're under my feet. I rise up in the strength of Christ. I'm victorious because of the blood of Jesus. I'm a new creation in Christ. The old has gone and the new has come. I walk in a new level of anointing. I have a double portion. I have a double portion. Devils flee on my watch. Sick are healed on my watch. Families are restored on my watch. I walk right into my destiny. I walk right into my future. The future is bright because of Christ in me. The hope of glory. Now somebody shout, yeah.